to Z-Tech Almanac. Today, we'll be building a $5 capacitor tester, specifically to test for leaky capacitors. And when I'm talking about leaky, I'm talking about electrically leaky capacitors where the internal resistance of the capacitor is becoming a short, basically, over time. And so this tester is basically measuring the internal or parallel resistance of the capacitor. And this is important because you know, if the capacitor becomes a short, then it destroys the circuitry around it. Uh, and, you know, when old equipment has these types of capacitors in it, you know, it needs to be changed. And so this cheap tester will uh, let us find out if, you know, the capacitors is good or not. And, you know, we'll go through how to test electrolytics. Those are sort of the most important ones to figure out if they're leaky or not, or if they're good or not. And then, We'll also test some other types of capacitors as well. Well, let's get to it. So here's what we're going to be measuring uh, with this capacitor tester. So this is a um, simple, so equivalent circuit of a capacitor. Um, think of these two leads as sort of the leads of the actual capacitor. So I want to put a capacitor here. You know, that will be connected to these two leads there. So there's two interesting resistors, I guess, to, to measuring the capacitor. There's also inductors that I left off here, but we have the equivalent series resistance, or ESR. We want this to be as low as possible, you know, close to zero ohms. We have the EPR, or equivalent parallel resistor. This is the leakage resistance that we're measuring today. And of course, we have the uh, ideal capacitance right here. So the EPR resistor we want to be as high as possible so we want that to be an open so that you know there's no short across the capacitor so when capacitors get older due to just their construction you know this resistance here the EPR becomes lower and lower and when I say lower we're talking about you know from hundreds of mega ohms to maybe tens of mega ohms um, but you know some capacitors will go down to hundreds of kilo ohms or even you know tens of kilo ohms and then they're really, really, you know, drawing a lot of current, uh, especially at high voltages through that re resistance right there. So imagine if you have a power supply filtering capacitor and this EPR is, you know, tens of kilo ohms and you're filtering 100 volts. That's going to draw quite a bit of current just across that capacitor. And of course, it's going to diminish the um, effectiveness of that capacitor. Okay, so today we're going to build this meter for five dollars to measure this EPR. So here is the capacitor tester for leakage. We're measuring these three test capacitors, capacitors here just to see how leaky they are. There's two 9 volt batteries here. The circuit is super simple as you can tell. It's hooked up to my multimeter and the multimeter is set to the microamp uh, selection there. So the way we know a capacitor is leaky is that if there is a lot of amperage going through it, then it means that the, the internal resistance is, um, is lower than it should be. But we need to go put, put you know, some voltage across it just to measure that amperage. So you can't just use the ohm meter on the meter um, itself to measure, measure that. And that, that has to do with the way leakage works. It's not a linear resistance. Voltage has to be applied there for that resistance to show some current going through or have that current go through there. So uh, I put the two 9 volts batteries in series just because a lot of my electrolytics are maybe lo lowest 25 volts and so the two 9 volt batteries will, will yield 18 volts there. So we'll discuss here the circuit a little bit more in more depth um, when I show the schematic but let's measure uh, the first capacitor. We'll take this one here. This is a 4700 microfarad 35 volt capacitor and all I'm doing here is I'm just going to hook it up to um, one side of the multimeter here and the other side to this clip here. And we'll wait a reasonable amount, so maybe about 10-20 seconds. As you can see that we got about 1.5 milliamps going through there it's going down very slowly and so this I would consider this capacitor quite leaky. 
Uh, you know, if 10, 20 seconds pass by, even for a large value capacitor like this, and still, you know, at 1 milliamp range, that is quite a bit of current at 18 volts. Imagine that going through a, a supply that's actually 30 volts or, you know, uh, so uh, definitely is something that I would call this one a leaky capacitor. We'll set this aside. Now, one thing to note is that I discharge these capacitors um, previously, so make sure that they're charged, otherwise this won't measure the right, uh, the right values. Here's another one. It's 2200 microfarad, 63 volts. So again, we'll put it in there uh, with the positive lead going to the meter and the negative lead going to this other clip here. And that too starts up pretty high at 1.5 milliamps. It's going down slowly. So it's going down a little faster than the previous one. Um, you know, and the value of the capacitor has to do with it a little bit, but you know, if you're just sitting here waiting for it to go down to, you know, still at roughly one milliamp or hundreds of microamps, this is definitely I would consider leaky and it has to be taken out of the circuit. Now, if you're measuring this in the circuit, you just have to unsolder one lead of the capacitor. So no need to take out the whole capacitor, just unsolder one lead and hook up these two probes to the capacitor. Here's another one. Now this is a smaller value, but it's a really good capacitor. It's a 68 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. And so we'll see how this behaves here. So put the positive there, negative here. As you can see that this one is quickly <laughs> going down to the single digit microamps. And even within you know, just a couple of seconds, it's gonna be it's gonna be right also uh, also below one microamp, 0.7 microamps. So this I would consider a very good capacitor, and you know it's not the value that a 60 microfarad. The reason it's going down is just because it's a good capacitor. And I didn't have exactly the same values to show you. Okay, thousand microfarad, the thousand microfarad leaky capacitors, but look at that. It's selling on a 0.4 microamps, 0.3 microamps. So this is a great capacitor, not leaky at all. Okay, so now let's um, look at some other capacitors as well and, and see how they, they behave. So electrolytics, uh, these are some examples for those. And let's look at some film capacitors. Here's a film capacitor. This is a really, really good capacitor. Um, it's an orange drop and uh, this won't even, won't even register really, just looking at quickly at the multimeter there. It just, it's just a bleep, blip, and it goes straight back to zero microamps. So it's a really, really good capacitor. Uh, there's, there's some older um, capacitors found in old receivers that will be leaky, but uh, some of these some of these newer capacitors will be really, really good. And, you know, if you find these in, in circuits, uh, they don't need to be changed. Okay, so here's the $5 capacitor test of circuit. As you imagine, it's very simple. We have a 18 volt voltage source here, my two uh, 9 volt batteries. Um, we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor. I'll explain this in just a little bit. Why is that for? And then I have the uh, multimeter set to microamps connected here in series. And then these are two leads that connect to the capacitor on their test. So the question is, why do you need the 10K resistor? Well, just to protect the meter uh, in case the capacitor is shorted or near shorted. In a microamp setting, the meter has a fuse in there. Mine has a 400 milliamp fuse. So if you don't have that resistor, surely the, the 18 volt batteries will, will, will blow that fuse in the meter. So just, you know, protecting that meter um, and make sure that not too much current is going through there. So that's, that's it for a circuit. And really the cost, if I'm coming up with the five dollars is just the batteries, right? If you buy a, a pack of 10 9 volt batteries, it comes out of a couple of dollars per battery plus, you know, pay a couple of cents for the resistor and, you know, the meter, I assume that you have. So, you know, the cost is not included for that one. But, you know, if you do have to actually get a meter, um, you know, Amazon has them for like $20 and 
you know, they do have, and those 20 millimeters do have the microamp uh, measurement. So this, the one I use is the same, you know, 20 meter. So, so at max you are, you are at $25, but assuming that you have a meter, the whole thing will be $5 or less, right? Especially if you already have the 9 volt batteries. So the next question is, you know, how do we know what microamp reading to look for, for different types of capacitors and, you know, what is considered leaky versus not? Well, the simple answer is, is that if it's above a few uh, microamps, you know, that's leaky. From my perspective, that's my bar for uh, leakiness. So any capacitor, if it shows 10 microamps, I'm like, I'm starting to get concerned. I'm like, okay, it's time to change that out. It's just peace of mind and making sure that, you know, the circuits that you restore or build are the highest quality, right? We're not, uh, you know, at least I'm not building mass production circuits. So I want to build things that last and I can use them for a long time. And, you know, I'm not going to cut costs of saving a couple of cents on a capacitor, you know. Um, so if I see something that's 10 micrograms or above factory lake or whatever, um, you know, it's gone. So, but, you know, it's, it's sometimes comes down to time and, and effort as well. So if you have a big project that needs to be restored, you can't really measure all the capacitors. And, you know, frankly, you know, the, the circuit might work just fine with, you know, 10 microamp leakage. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it just comes down to the fact that, you know, how much effort is it to change out all the capacitors, right? But, you know, if it comes down to electrolytics and they're 20, 30 years old, they're likely going to show leakage. You can measure them. I, I, you just measure just a few in the circuit just to check. And if I see what I've showed you before with electrolytics that are in hundreds of microamps, a milliamp, maybe one and a half milliamps, that's definitely leaking. That's definitely very, very high current for uh, a capacitor. So they have to go, all have to go and, and be changed. But uh, I'm going to show you here a um, sort of a guidance scale of, of what are some, some current limits for, for determining if a capacitor is leaky or not. So here's a printout of, uh, from a manual of an old heat kit capacitor tester and, you know, from the 1950s. So back then capacitors were not as good as today. So this is just the guidance of what they found back then to be considered leaky or not. So this particular capacitor tester works on the same principle as what I just showed you. There is a resistor in series with a voltage source except you can set the voltage all the way up to 600 volts, which is, I would not recommend ever. It's too high. And nowadays with the digital multimeter, you can measure down in the microamp. So there's no reason to set the voltage high. They set up the voltage high back then because they used the, an eye tube to measure um, the leakage. And so that needed to have enough current and enough voltage to be able to tell you if the capacitor is leaky or not. So here it is. So for electrolytic, they say that they consider anything that's 2 milliamp leakage or over to be a leaky capacitor. Well, in 1950, that was the case. Today, as I showed you, I'd say, you know, anything that's 2 milliamps, I would get rid of it. It's no, no good, right? That is a lot of current uh, to be leaking through an electrolytic capacitor as by today's standards. So electrolytics, if, you, you know, you, you can, as I said, 10, 10 microamps is my bar. But you might say, okay, well, 100 microamps is might be a, a good enough bar, but it's certainly not milliamps. Uh, the other setting this meter had is they called a min minlytic um, capacitor, and I believe that was a I think it was a either paper or mica, but uh, I think that was a mica capacitor. So just going up on a page here, um, here's the section that kind of continues here. So for that one, they recommend 50 microamps, 1.5 microamps to be considered leaky. Um, you know, and that probably stands as of today as well. So again, that's, that's sort of around my bar as well, about 10 microamps where I would say, okay, the capacitor is leaky. And then for paper capacitors, which they don't make anymore today, but old electronics used to have these paper capacitors you know, they, they usually become very, very leaky over time, um, even shorted. And so, but, you know, surprisingly, their, their target was two microamps for those. 
Um, if I had one, uh, I bet you they, were, they would be up in the milliamps as of today, so, uh, or more possibly, or just a complete short. Uh, so, uh, you know, but those, those are kind of capacitors that, that need to be changed regardless, but they set a two milliamp, uh, two microamp target for those. So this just gives you a little bit of, um, um, guidance really. Um, again, it's a 1950s era, uh, capacitor meter. So I would definitely lower, uh, or be more stringent, uh, with today's modern capacitors, um, as far as how much leakage is should be considered, um, you know, okay or not. Well, we reached the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed uh, building the $5 capacitor tester and hope that if you build it, um, you'll be able to use it to detect and figure out if uh, you're, when you're restoring equipment, your capacitors are, have to be changed or not. And it's really useful. I use it all the time. Um, when you know I want to restore something, or I get an old equipment, or even even if I just find a capacitor in the in the bin, and you know I don't really know how old it is, and so it's just best to test it just to make sure. And if if it shows any signs of leakage, I'll just throw it out. There's no reason to try to reform them or try to fix them in some other way. And you know it's just a lot safer to get a new capacitor have that peace of mind that uh, it will work uh, for several years, tens of years, hopefully, if you get a good one uh, in the equipment that you're building or restoring and just avoid the risk of an old capacitor accidentally shorting and, you know, causing, you know, widespread damage in the, in the equipment. Well, thanks for watching. We have lots of exciting and neat projects coming up in the future and stick around.